so we we are gathered again for another sculpture forum and i am joined as usual by um my colleague dr ireland and brant Johnso, and we are very grateful this time to be joined um by brilliant young artist celia gerard um thank you celia i'm very generous of you to uh, contribute your time to this Thanks so much, Gar. All of this, all of this is being um, put together by the brilliant Rachel Bolander, who has shot a film of the exhibition we're going to be talking about. So, Rachel, thank you. This time we're going to be talking about an exhibition of the work of Nikki de Saint-Fond, a French-American artist who died um, let me see, 2002, I think, um, born in 1930. Uh, she's a, an artist who I had not paid close attention to, uh, generally being aware of, of her work, thinking it a, a very commercial undertaking, thinking it not my cup of tea at all. And, and generally not, you know, not something in the realm of, of, of you know, what I consider to be my kind of interest. Um, but we were talked into um, discussing this work. I think uh, Rachel had a hand in that um, because it's a major exhibition and she's clearly an artist of some consequence. Um, I spent some time in the exhibition uh, and, and, you know, was, was greatly impressed by the, the energy, the, the ambition, the, uh, the uh, almost, uh, you know, I, I, I have a lot to say and I don't want to kind of just jump in and, and talk too much. I'd like, you know, get some other reactions. I mean, it's still very much not my cup of tea, but at the same time, uh, I think it's a very complex situation and, and a not uninteresting one. And all my reservations were, were affirmed. And at the same time, I ended up with a kind of tremendous sort of sense of respect for this artist. Somebody else. Yeah, you know, she, um, I've, I've been aware of her work, um, but I wouldn't say I've been a, 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 a fan um, necessarily um, until now, really, until, until seeing the show. Um, I saw it twice. The first time was with my daughter, who's two and a half. And um, I, I will say that was um, kind of a thrill because it was just, I, we were kind of running around looking at all of this, this stuff. Um, I think just kind of as it is um, without any, you know, I, I just experienced it kind of from her point of view and it was just pure joy, really. I mean, she was so, she loved seeing all these creatures, the dragon, the Gila monster, the palace, the, um, you know, the character out front. I, I mean, uh, I, you know, I was, the, the only really disappointing part was that we couldn't go into some of the structures that, you know, all that we, that, that we saw the maquettes for. Um, um, and uh, so there was a kind of, um, you know, just pure sort of joyful um, response in a way to, you know, the kind of the, the freedom and the, the um, exuberance and the, <laughs> the imaginative um, world that she is creating. Um, the, the second time I saw it, I was alone and, and had um, a somewhat different experience. Um, but just, I think it's just knowing a little bit more about her and, and her life and, um, you know, kind of the background to some of this work that, um, you know, tinted it with like a kind of darker hue, let's just say, that's a gentle way to say it. But um, yeah. uh, you know, in, in, in general, um, 
yeah, I mean, I, in general, I have to say, I, 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 um, I, I loved the show, um, to my surprise. Um, I, I just kind of, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I just thought it was so, so strong and so fearless. I have a, uh, you know, somewhat different viewpoint that maybe it's, uh, you know, it's worth getting them both in the air at the same time. I, I, I think this work is really formidable and efficient and effective, and it's it's really powerful um, public art for one thing. Um, I don't. I have very little affection for it. I, I share very little with it. Um, I think the most interesting aspect of my take is that I find it kind of horrifying and I have a, a sensation that doesn't shake that it's about some episode of horror. And even the pieces that seem you know, most ostensibly, simply, you know, exuberantly celebratory, that, that sensation still hooks in there. I feel like it's a kind of a, there's a defensive naivete. Yeah, I, so, I, mean, I, I absolutely, I absolutely share that response. I mean, I, I don't want to, I don't want to, I w wait for you to hear from Jock, but yeah. Uh, I, I can s say I sort of didn't like the show itself, um, but it's sort of impossible to, or it would seem to me to be impossible to uh, show the, her work effectively in any kind of limited amount of space. Um, so I, it, my, response to the show was in part to the work itself, but I um, I didn't sort of get the feeling that I saw much of the work. I was more a response to this character who made the work and who made work that I could see on the films or videos that were scattered through the exhibition. And it's that character uh, that I, found interesting much more interesting than the the work itself uh, or the work that was in the show uh, the work that was in the show put me off but I'm kind of delighted to hear that Celia's daughter did respond to the work and the idea that uh, uh, the audience for this work was at, at least partly children and uh, but that complicated sense of innocence associated with the work well the sense of innocence associated with the work is complicated as I think Brant and Garth are pointing out um, so, you know, I, you know, I, I mean, I think what I said about the two different experiences where it was actually quite wonderful to see it through my daughter's eyes, not knowing anything about this dark figure versus the second time I went kind of, you know, with the, with the knowledge, um, about, as you're calling her, the, you know, the character who made the work and, um, and, and as, um, Grant was saying, the kind of, you know, the layers and layer, the psychological layers that kind of go into it um, from, let's just say, a more adult, <laughs> I don't know, point of view. I mean, I, anyway, I, I just I find it quite interesting that the work can be viewed from these two different multiple perspectives. Yeah. My, my, my experience of, of in this, however long it was I spent in this exhibition was I felt a bit like I'd gone to a fairground, um, been on too many rides, eaten too much junky food, and was ended up feeling quite sick. Hmm. Um, you know, the initial kind of impact of joy, pleasure, exuberance, uh, playful, escape, um, 
you know, gradually wore off and I, and I, I, I ended up with this sense of real horror, uh, real terror, actually. I do appreciate what Jock said that perhaps, you know, the, 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 the most significant and important achievements might be the, the very large kind of installations, uh, kind of almost playground like things that she made, in which presumably uh, children delight in. Uh, uh, and and that, that you know one can't 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 include in an exhibition like this. Yeah, uh, the exhibition felt very cleaned up, except the piece that we're looking at now, that was beat up and turned yellow and everything. I mean, you know, I mean, and speaking of beat up things, right? She was she started with shooting sculptures. Yeah, yeah. I, I was going to go there. Thank you, thank you, Siri. The the, the violence that's the, yeah, and, exactly. and the sheer, sheer kind of implication of aggression that's in the early, very early uh, things she did, which were really kind of performance pieces, right. where, where she's um, embedding, you know, uh, balloons of paint and uh, other things in in material, and then shooting at it uh, to explode these things and letting the colors and what have you drip out. That, that, that didn't seem at all innocent as a practice. Um, and, 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 you know, it, they were performance pieces as well. And, um, you know, she, she seemed to very much kind of like work in a world where she wanted an audience and wanted a participatory kind of practice. It, it, it didn't, it did, you know, she wasn't, it seemed to me, interested in the kind of uh, practice that is, uh, you know, going on in isolation in a studio away from the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's exactly, that's right. And it's that need for an audience and engagement with an audience, whether the audience is children or, you know, sophisticated art world people. Uh, that's a characteristic of her work and it's something that she shares with a lot of other artists uh, uh, that are sort of off of that modernist uh, sort of stream uh, that remains aloof from any kind of audience. I'm curious, I mean, going back to, I think it was you, Garth, who said at one point you felt kind of sickened by the show. And, you know, I mean, just thinking about the progression of the show, I wonder, you know, when it was that you realized that you were feeling that way. Um, <laughs> I, no, really, because I, I sort of agree with Jack. Like, I think it's kind of very neat and orderly and and um, there is definitely this undercurrent of violence and terror, I think for sure. And I think she would have loved that all of you have had that response to it, actually. Um, but I, I, I think also like Jack, I, I, it was so cleaned up. And um, I was so curious what these looked like before, you know, are they, have they been <laughs> kind of refurbished? Are they, uh, you know, and what the, the pieces outside look like, and like how they were made and how they look so pristine in their current you know, condition, and is that a factor of the exhibition and the, you know, or is it um, how they were made and they just, I know they're polyester, some of them are polyester and different kinds of plastics, which apparently is one of, one of the factors that led to her death, her early, you know, at 72, um, that she was poisoned by some of the materials that she used, but um, yeah, I, I'm just surprised. I, I, I think the darkness and all of that I get, but the sickening factor. When, when does that, when did that come into it for you? Well, I, I don't. I mean, I think gradually as I progressed through the exhibition and 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 to just think about the content of the work, and finally when I, you know, went outside and sat down. I think Jock and I saw it together, and I sat down with Jock afterwards. We had a bottle of water and I drank it thinking, oh, God, I really need this. I feel quite sick. Um, and and uh, you know, just thinking about what I'd experienced. And, and, and 
I think a sense of being torn, you know, in in in, in this way of of uh, you know the, the, the ostensible innocence covering up something not at all nice. Um, and I, I, I wonder, Celia, if you're correct, if she would have been pleased that we have this reaction. That there's yeah. I mean, I, I can't speak for her. I don't know. But my guess is that she, 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 she would fully embrace that interpretation. You know, I'm, I'm, I think I'm also, I'm so, right now, I'm so immersed in the world of fairy tales and children's stories. And most of them are so dark. I mean, really, these stories are so dark. They're about death. They're about animals eating people and grandmothers. And um, so this sort of <laughs> speaks directly to that. And I thought her Hans Christian Andersen weird little film. I don't know if anyone watched that. But um, over there in the back left corner, you see someone in this image watching it, the, the woman in the back left. Um, super bizarre, really bizarre. I mean, really strange. And, um, you know, I think she's sort of delighted in the perversity of these things. And certainly, you know, I mean, um, this, this, anyway, the contradict, the contradiction of this like fantasy world and then, you know, the darkness that maybe isn't so deeply, <laughs> you know, hidden. I mean, maybe it's on the surface more than we're aware of. Yeah, Siri, she did not publicly, at least, I wish she may have privately, but she did not publicly acknowledge having been sexually abused as a child until she was quite elderly. You know, and I, I, I have some question about the extent to which she herself was keeping her feelings about that at bay with this work. I think she was. I mean, I, I do think that there is a, you know, this is not, I mean, there is a restraint, <laughs> you know, exhibited here. She's not, it's not like, she's not telling us her autobiography, let's just say. Um, she's creating a world. It is autobiographical, I think. Hi, this is um, you know, she's creating a world of imagery, whether it's escapist, maybe, I mean, maybe that's where you're going. I mean, you know, is she, escape is she, is she avoiding the subject? I don't know. Um, I think it's more go-to than escapist. Mm -hmm. the, the visual style has a lot of obsessive compulsive elements that, you know, it just seems like, you know, revisiting a scene or a world of feelings again and again and uh you know kind of encircling and bordering them and patterning them and you know breaking them into like you know tessellated fields and it's sort of like a disruption of form but, but also like kind of like throwing a net over form you know many times it's kind of like network of black lines i i have a feeling that she couldn't possibly have been um you know, un unaware of her subject or her feelings about it for the, the course of her life. I mean, I, I would guess that a lot of times she's working out of a kind of, you know, reflex response. But, um, you know, even so, one, one recognizes eventually. And someone who's, who's apparently as intelligent as her, it's like impossible to imagine she doesn't get onto it. But I think maybe also, you know, preserves as a kind of territory or her work as a as a place to you know visit in an almost inarticulate way, or more as a witness there, or a, than a participant. I, I can't help but think the the contrast between uh, you know the, her finding a way to do these big public projects out of her own pocket, and then somebody like Richard Serra, who's you know like the creature of his donors. It's, you know, what a contrast. Well, yeah, I, I, the Neils funded, funded her and she had, you know, these, these benefactors in, um, in Italy. That's how she was able to make the piece in Tuscany. I mean. Well, that wasn't, I mean, she herself, you know, did, did, did commercialize her practice to, to a very yeah. significant degree. Uh, 
uh, you know, often I think uh, with the justification of raising money uh, to, to produce these uh, major uh, outdoor playgrounds, I call them playgrounds, I don't know what else to call them that she made. Um, One of them was her home. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, 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 you know, but did, did, did she could, you know, she certainly did, did, did uh, you know, produce all kinds of things to make money that, uh, you know, um, jewelry and, and uh, fabrics and what, what have you. But she also, at the same time, I mean, or, you know, not at the same time, but she, she also made a lot of stuff that was pretty beat up and, you know, it seemed to me genuine uh, in a way that uh, the perfumes and so on were just, she wasn't really serious about that stuff. Except I, I think she was actually. I think she was okay. serious about the perfumes and the bottles, and I mean, she speaks about them quite. I mean, it's quite interesting what she says about them. Um, and and you know, I mean, yeah, she she fully admits she's raising money. I mean, she spent. The, I mean, these things were like millions of dollars. I mean, you know, yeah. Were, yeah. <laughs> um, and she was she you know she had benefactors and she had some money, I think, in the beginning, you know, but she was kind of scrambling for money. And I think that, um, you know, if there's certain the perfume and the jewelry, it's all certainly very commercial, but I mean, it was quite enterprising, I think, of her to do that. And, um, you know, to, I mean, I, I think at every twist and turn, she's coming up with like some, I mean, call it what, what you, whatever you wish, but, um, I think it's pretty fascinating how she re is reinventing herself um, throughout her her adult life. That all all of us as artists are both, you know, um, are offering something to the world, which which we think, on the one hand, is going to kind of gain an understanding uh, for us, and on the other hand, is is concealing something. Um, I mean, it is quite fascinating though, the range of response that she's, that this work elicits, um, you know, from from the us here now. And then, you know, as I keep coming <clears throat> the joy that my daughter, but clearly other children, many, 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 you know, children who have played on these structures, um, you know, find them totally delightful. Yeah, that piece that's on screen right now, I mean, that ain't innocent. Yeah. Right, and, and you know, I think, and that is a piece that, you know, I think, I mean, she was a, fully aware, you know, is not innocent, right? Yeah. I mean, you enter through her vagina, I mean, you know, and I think there's this, uh, I think, you know, that was her maybe blunt <laughs> way of like, forcing the you know um the subject of you know, we haven't even said the word nana yet like these nanas you know of being these like large imposing um cartoonish female figures with teensy tiny heads and you know cut off yeah. and yeah. Okay. but but all presented in a guise of something joyful and not to be taken seriously and not hurtful and not harmful and not you know, uh, you know, really? Like, I mean, I think that's the question. Are they all not to be taken seriously? Are they all meant to be joyful and not harmful? I mean, I, th I, I, I didn't find anywhere in the show a sense that, you know, the, 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 the horror was real and not so. This one has a skull head. And not, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, the, yeah. the, the, overall, the overall image there, and that thing we were just looking at is, you know, is, is um, a playful. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know. <laughs> I think it's multi-level for sure. Uh, no, no, come on, come on, come on. Look, 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 look at the forms, look at the colors, look at the... Yeah, but I mean, it's... As a death head rider carrying yeah. a sigh, surrounded with. Uh, yeah. I mean, she's the grim know, reaper. Charnel. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I see all that, but, but it's, 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 it's out of a child's picture book. 
the style the horror has horror elements it, where the, the horror is, book. Yeah, where the horror is somehow or other, um, <clears throat> you know, um, a way of making things safe rather than of actually engaging. But there you go about, you know, who's, who's, who's interpreting, who, who's making that call. Um, you know, I don't think this looks safe. Okay. Yeah, it, you know, it reminds me of um, uh, what's been said of a whole lot of Western literature that it was written under um, totalitarian regimes of one kind or another, kingdoms and dictatorships and tyrannies and uh, the author's own viewpoint is somewhere between the lines. Between the For lines reason, in terms of the, 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 the authority and the- uh, Yeah. And, and I think in, you know, for in her lifetime, she's aware of speaking out in what amounts to a, you know, almost monolithic patriarchy. And it's, it's, you know, it's miraculous that she managed to say what she said and did have patronage and, you know, did execute major, um, you know, public social projects. I, I think her, her style is a means of getting away with something, in a sense. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, she definitely had some things she wanted to say. And when she was shooting her own sculpture, it, it, people weren't really looking at it. But she figured out that if you dress it up, make it colorful, you know, put a face on a sculpture, um, people would look at it. it. It's very subversive. And that was her get that was her way of getting in the door. Is it inspiring to you? Rachel or, or Celia, you know, is, is she exciting to you in a way that, uh, you know, Leonardo da Vinci might be exciting, you know? Are you asking us because there were the women in the group? Or yeah, you, right, oh, right. Okay. Names at random. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Rachel. <laughs> Um, I'm not sure I really understand that. Like, are you asking me if it speaks to me differently and I'm excited? I, I mean, I, you know, great, yet another woman artist who had to find a different way to get noticed. I mean, that story is old. Yeah, um, but what about your cherry blossom thing? Is it at all related to this or isn't it related? No, I mean, I, did the cherry blossom thing as a completely commercial make people smile um, thing. I, she's, like I said, the message that she's trying to get across here is exactly the same as when she was shooting her sculptures. This is the way she figured out she could get noticed um, because it takes a while before maybe they're not jumping for joy or you wonder what it means to walk through a giant public outdoor sculptures vagina. Um, I mean, some of those, like the spider creature with eating dolls parts at the end, you know, it's not smiling, it's leering. She, she hooks you in and she gets you to look. Um, and that's like, that's kind of great. I respect that. Yeah, I mean, just to answer um, as the second, <laughs> the other woman in the room. Um, no, um, I feel that she's very much a product of her time and her place where, you know, where the time and the place where this work was made. I, I, as I said before, I, I, um, I love it for all the reasons, in fact, that everyone, I love that it's generating this conversation. I think it's totally fascinating. I would, um, you know, if I found myself in the vicinity of one of those large pieces, I would, I would go. Um, without a doubt. I wish I'd seen the show at Salon 84 that was up this spring with the larger works. Um, but it has, it really has nothing to do with my own work um, as it, I don't know, it probably has more to do with your work, Jock, than mine. Um, but, um, you know, I, I, do I find it inspiring? I find her fearlessness inspiring. I mean, as a, as a person, <laughs> um, I find her a fascinating character, um, you know, um, I would say, um, you know, I, I don't know, um, her subject matter, you know, is, is her subject matter. I mean, it's not my subject matter. Um, her, her forms are her forms and, you know, they're very, very different from mine. 
Um, so yeah. it's sort of like, do you find Leonardo and I mean, you said you put Leonardo in there. I mean, yeah, I find Leonardo incredibly inspiring. Um, you know, um, my subject matter is different from, you know, I, I don't know. I guess I'm, I'm not quite sure where you were going with that question. You can see that. Yeah, kind of I, happened, I, 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 I'm, you know, I, I think maybe this is the issue, you know, for me, at least the real source of my feeling of sickness in a way is this idea that coming to see you're talking about, you know, that in order to address, in order to speak about, in order to begin to kind of reference something um you know that that that, that, that is, is 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 terrifying and, and horrible um it has to if it's a woman speaking about it it has to be or had to be dressed up in this childlike innocence in order to be able to somehow or other put it out there that that is really that is really you know, that is, I mean, I, yeah, I guess that's the, the case or was the case. And, and that it, in itself is really, you know, pretty kind of horrible to think about. Sure. Women cannot speak directly about things that happen to them that are offensive and more than offensive, downright destructive, uh, you know, without somehow the disguising it in some you know feminist or childlike allure is 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 sickening well eva eva Hassa didn't disguise it and i think you know i think there i mean i think there are a lot of examples of women artists who are you know for again certainly you know that there was a, a i mean in the 60s and the early 70s right this so there i mean this was the kind of uh and i mean nikki was not in that group she was in actually a group of all men, right? The neo realists, I think they were called with Tangley and, um, you know, uh, I can't remember who else is in that group right now, but um, so she, she actually, you know, wasn't in like a feminist group even per se, you know, it wasn't, uh, although she certainly considered herself a feminist and, but I think it's an interesting question because it, I, I mean, at the end of the day, it's what did she have to say? I mean, she's, this is, you know, she has this very particular subject matter and it drives her work. And as um, Brant was saying before, this kind of, you know, lexicon of imagery and um, as it does for, you know, for, for most artists, I think, uh, you know, I mean, your, our personal imagery, whatever that might be, it changes, it evolves over time. But you're, we're always coming back to whatever it is that drives us. I mean, the kind of force that, right, pushes one forward to make work. Um, you know, hers happened to be her personal story, and then the time and place. I think that she, you know, she she grew up in and and she found herself in um, the emergence of of feminism as a movement. Right. What I remain, and, and I think we are unclear about, and, and, and reasonably so, I suppose, is the extent to which, you know, this was a kind of conscious, deliberate strategy on her part, and the extent to which she was herself, uh, you know, driven uh, by, by forces that she kind of sort of recognized, but was, uh, um, held at some arm's length and was unable to, for whatever reason, uh, um, more fully and directly engage. I, and I don't know that we know the answer to that. I mean, I, you, you guys seem to think, or at least I think Celia seems to feel that she was fully aware and, and I think Jock Brandt does too, that, you know, that this was a conscious strategy, this, exuberant, innocent, playful um, <clears throat> presentation was a conscious strategy of, of getting across the horror that she had experienced. Um, and I, I'm, 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 not, I'm, not, I'm not convinced. I mean, I, I, I hope that was the case. Here's another uh, convincing argument for it. 
find another such artist who's, you know, who's visually seems to be just so, you know, kind of almost artistically independent of the outside world. It's, it's remarkable. And I, and I can't, and I think that for it to be that strong and persistent and, you know, followed through at such length that it's got to be both an unconscious drive and a deliberate effort. I think, I think her contact kept, content kept coming back to her, right? Um, and her own narrative. Um, and these characters, these nanas, the way, you know, the way that she's drawing or making these forms, the characters are part of her vocabulary. I mean, it's almost like she's burrowing in, you know, uh, forgive me if it, like, but she's burrowing into this world, like, you know, literally going mm -hmm. through the tunnels of her own, her own sculptures, you know, um, and kind of, um, you know, she can never get out, mm -hmm. right? Um, and, and that's maybe a limitation. I mean, maybe Garth, that's what you're saying. I mean, maybe that's the limitation of the work, you know, it's so self, -re self referential and, um, you know, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and it doesn't evolve, does it? I mean, it doesn't evolve either in content or in form. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think the style uh, um, evolves. Do you? Uh, but it's but it's also it's it's remarkably continuous and true to itself. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was that it was that lack of absence, not lack absence of of a kind of sense of uh, as I progress through the exhibition. The, the, you know, the, 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 the work was in some way changing, evolving, one's tempted to say maturing uh, mm -hmm. in this case. Um, the, the, the absence of that, that kind of left yeah. me feeling, questioning, I mean, basically, does she know what she's doing? And then I, I totally agree with that, actually. But I, at the same time, I have to say, I... I'm sort of in awe <laughs> that she didn't, you know, that yeah, she- No, I, 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 Celia, you're absolutely on the money. I, I, that was also my feeling, you know? I mean, in some way, there was tremendous respect for this continuing struggle. Yeah. Um, and, 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 you know, in a way, a kind of sadness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good, thank you, everybody. <laughs>